The Alabama Crimson Tide rolled into Death Valley last night and pretty much took what they wanted. Final score, Alabama 42, LSU 13. It's a bit discombobulating. If you're an LSU fan, if you're an Alabama fan, you're like, hey, we're back, baby. We're back and we're thinking playoff. We'll unpack both sides of this thing right now, but first things first, whether you're an LSU fan, whether you're an Alabama fan, if you're just a college football sicko, welcome home. We're glad to have you here. Make sure you are subscribed. We are uh, rounding the final stretch in the regular season of the college football season, the college football playoff on the horizon. Just want you locked in for all things college football all year round right here. Thank you so much for that. So here's my takeaways when it comes to the Alabama side of things. Takeaway number one, Kalen DeBoer is going to be fine. He's going to be fine. And it sounds funny to say that out loud because you look at his record and my dude's 111 and 14 or something like that. That's according to Wikipedia as of this morning. I know the bottom line, he's, he's doing really, really well when it comes to his overall coaching record in his career. Okay, dude knows how to coach football. But I think the question sort of arose here and there was an inkling going into the season with him coming from Washington. Hey, is he built for coaching in barbecue country? Because you did that thing on the West Coast, that's cool. Uh, was he built for the SEC, though, the day-to-day -day grind, the week-to-week -week grind, where you play Georgia one week, and then you play Vandy the next, then you play South Carolina, and then you play... I mentioned Vandy because the Vanderbilt game was a game that I think a lot of people uh, were surprised by. And surprise is probably a, uh, a uh, somewhat uh, soft way to put it when you talk about how, how the Alabama fan base felt after that game. After the South Carolina game, you're like, wait, what is going on here? This Alabama team does not look the same. The Tennessee game, whoa, what is up with Alabama? Is Kalen DeBoer cut out for the SEC? It's year one, and he just went into what I think most people would consider the toughest place to play in college football, beat a team by darn near 30 points. I'll say this too, a good LSU football team. That final score I don't think is totally reflective of how good LSU is. I think it's more reflective of how dominant Alabama was. I mean, they, they took it to LSU. This was the same Alabama team now that we saw for those first two quarters against Georgia. And if you're an Alabama fan, you feel a little bit relieved, like, okay, there they are. Good. Good to see you again. Glad to have you here. Takeaway number two, if Jalen Milrow is rolling the way that he rolled last night on the ground and the way that he rolled on the ground against Georgia, when you got Jalen Milrow's legs cooking, Alabama can play with anyone. When I say anyone, I mean anyone. I mean Ohio State. I mean Texas. Obviously, Georgia, Oregon, pick anyone in America. And if you can tell me that Jalen Milrow is going to get over 100 yards on the ground, I think Alabama will be not just in that football game. They have a more than decent chance to win that football game. One, because it means your best athlete on your team, more or less, is able to impact the game to the nth degree. Two, it means everything else around Jalen Milrow opens up. And we've seen that now at different points in time. You cannot properly account for Jalen Milrow's legs and not roll down to safety, and then also account for Ryan Williams in the perimeter and the rest of the wide receiving threats that Alabama has. Now, last night was sort of a thing where LSU just couldn't account for Jalen Milrow, period. And so Alabama didn't really need to do a whole lot else through the air. But, like, if you can tell me Jalen Milrow is going to have over 100 yards on the ground, I'll take Alabama to win that football game. Just, I mean, just straight up. Look at, the, look at the Georgia game. Over 100 yards rushing. Last night, darn near 200 yards rushing. Alabama is such a momentum team to me. And the way they get their momentum rolling is Jalen Milrow on the ground with his legs. So I think it's refreshing a little bit if you're an Alabama fan to hear, okay, we still have that Bama gear. Haven't seen it consistently. That's the next step under Kalen DeBoer. That's going to be the next, I think, phase of this whole thing as you move into the, uh, the playoff stretch, if you will, when it comes to Alabama. But like when Alabama is operating how they're capable of operating, they can play with anyone, like I just mentioned. And you saw it last night defensively, too. It wasn't just a thing where you had Jalen Milrow rolling. It was the defense as well. I mean, we, we keep talking about how good LSU's offensive line is. I mean, Alabama got after Garrett Nussmeyer. I know he only had, they only had two sacks on the day, did Alabama's defense, but they moved him off his spot consistently, which led to the turnovers, which led to uh, the, the, the issues that LSU had offensively. They were never able to get in rhythm. Going into this game, hand up, I picked LSU because I thought the secondary would be an issue for Alabama. And whether or not it would be an issue, I guess we'll never know because, again, Garrett Nussmeyer was not comfortable all night long, never even got a chance to pick at the secondary. And so all that's to say now, Alabama, as they move into this final stretch, I think that win last night, you should be thinking college football playoff. Absolutely. I mean, look what you have left here. Mercer, no disrespect, uh, at Oklahoma. Oklahoma, y'all, it's, it's not great in Norman right now. I'll just say that. It's not great in Norman. Then you got Auburn, not in Jordan-Hare, in Tuscaloosa. So if you're Alabama, again, Kalen DeBoer will be just fine. 
Jalen Milrow is rolling. You can play with anybody. I do mean anybody. And I think you look at what that defense brought to the table last night. Like, as long as you have that gear, if you're Alabama, just get us in the dance. Allow us to reset a little bit here. We're going to have uh, more than a puncher's chance against anybody and everybody. Now, for LSU, there's going to be a lot of reaction coming out of Baton Rouge. Going to be a lot of reaction from shows on different four-letter networks this week, and that's fine. Like, let, let, let it happen. There's going to be a lot of reaction, I think, from the fan base at LSU. I understand that. Here's what I would say, though. That game in itself, I don't think, defines Brian Kelly like a lot of people are going to lead you to believe that it does. It's one game. It's one game, and it sucks, but here's the reality. You absolutely could just, I mean, get Bryce Underwood to have pen meet paper on National Signing Day. He ends up being generational. You end up hauling in a great recruiting class with him. You go and add some pieces through the portal over the course of the next couple of years, then bada-bing, bada-boom, Ellis use a wagon, and maybe you end up winning a national title that has eluded Brian Kelly to this point in his career. That is definitely possible. And we'll look back at this game, and maybe we won't even look back at this game at all. Maybe we'll just forget this game ever happened. But here's the thing. In the context of last night, the real knock against LSU and against Brian Kelly is the way that it reflects and just the optics in general coming out of that game. And Brian Kelly said as much at his post-game press conference last night. He's like, if you watch that game after we got diced up by a mobile quarterback in A&M, you would think after a whole bye week to prepare, we would be able to stop the running quarterback. And instead, we allowed him for almost 200 yards on the ground. So you're, you're, you're left this whole... Uh, this conversation from the game is saying, what did they do for two weeks? And Brian Kelly is exactly right. And I think it's not unfair to say that LSU probably felt good about their plan going in. I would hope so. If you're an SEC coaching staff, you should feel good about your plan going in. But whether or not it was an execution thing, whether your plan wasn't actually all that great at the end of the day, the point remains, your team did not come ready to play. However you want to slice it, they were not ready to play. So who does that reflect on? The staff? And on Brian Kelly. And so the optics now, unfortunately, on the recruiting trail is, hey, Alabama is still ahead of LSU when it comes to where that program is and where LSU is. Because this was your chance if you're LSU. Year three versus a year one head coach at his spot. I think a lot of people thought going into the game that LSU actually had the advantage at quarterback in Garrett Nussmeyer. You were at home at night. Those are two things that, that when they come together, Brian Kelly had not lost in Death Valley at night. And so all of those things combined for this great buildup, and LSU just swung and missed. And so the optics now, again, are Alabama's here and LSU's here. Whether that's true or not over the course of Kalen DeBoer's time in Tuscaloosa and Brian Kelly's time in Baton Rouge remains to be seen, but that's how it feels. And a lot of times perception in this sport now ends up being reality. So for LSU, still got a lot in front of you. Not the college football playoff. And I'll say this too. I mean, LSU is not bummed because they're missing out on the college football playoff. And Brian Kelly said this. They're bummed because they did not play to the standard that is set internally in Baton Rouge. What that logo requires, man. Because of, I mean, it's just everything combined there. I mean, this game in itself was always bigger than playoff implications. But Brian Kelly and this team can definitely still end up winning 10 football games, factoring in a bowl win. But it's disappointing because of what was on the table and because of how it reflects. So Alabama's thinking playoff, LSU's looking in the mirror, the optics are not great if you're a Tiger, and if you are in Tuscaloosa today, you are thinking playoff, and you should be, and uh, if Jalen Milrow is rolling, you got a chance against anybody. Let me know what you think about this game, Twitter, Instagram, at JD Piquel. Hey, we love y'all, we appreciate y'all, make sure you're subscribed on your way out, we're going to keep this party rolling, and we will see y'all next time.